Now, here we are again with the voltage current relationship for a semiconductor diode. And before we go anywhere, we better be very clear what a diode is. Well, look at this. What is a semiconductor diode? Well, there's its symbol. That symbol is in the maths tables near the end. That's the symbol for a semiconductor diode. And what is a semiconductor diode? Well, it's an electronic component. It's a component that allows a current to flow in one direction only. So a diode is like a one-way street for electric current. It allows electric current to go one way through it only. If electric current tries to come that way, the diode will block it. Don't ever say it's a one-way street for electric current. This is the definition. It's a electronic component that allows the current to flow in one direction only. Now, look at this. Here we've got a diode in the circuit. Let's just analyze this. That's the plus of the battery. Always be careful when you draw batteries. That's the minus terminal of the battery. Current flows from plus to minus. So will the electric current flow through that diode? Yes, it will. The electric current will flow through that diode. We know that because the current and the arrow in the diode symbol is going the same way. That diode will conduct. We all know what conduct means. It means allowing electric current to flow through it. And when a diode conducts, it's said to be, diode is said to be, forward biased. Now that's a curious kind of phrase, very old phrase. It simply means when a diode is forward biased, it means that one end is plus, one end is minus, and in such a way that a current can flow through it. So when you hear about a diode being forward biased, that simply means that the diode conducts electric current. And that end has to be plus, and that end has to be minus. Let's look at this diagram here. Same plus and minus of the battery, but now the diode is switched around. The diode is reversed. Can electric current come that way? No, because the current is going against the arrow inside in the diode. Something in the diode stops the current. So this time, time in this case, the diode does, D -O -E -S, is it? not conduct. So the diode does not conduct. Of course, if the diode doesn't conduct, what is the name for something that doesn't conduct electric current? It's an insulator. So when a diode is connected like this, this end plus, this end minus, the opposite of there, it acts as a insulator. It does not conduct. And what do we say about the diode? Well, if it conducts, it's forward biased. What's the opposite of forward? Now the diode is said to be reverse biased. And you're asked in an exam, what does a diode reverse bias mean? It means it's connected up so it will not conduct the current. So a diode is like a one-way street for electricity, electric current, sorry. If you connect it one way, it's forward biased and conducts. Connect it the other way, it's reverse biased and doesn't conduct. That comes into the experiment. Now, what's a diode used for? Well, I'm gonna throw these at you a little bit. I'm not gonna explain them too much. First thing, a diode can be used in a mobile phone charger to convert alternating current to direct current. That's one of the main uses in the world of diodes. That process, turning AC into DC, we're not talking about Australian bands, converting AC into DC, that's known as rectification or a rectifier. Diodes can also be used as kind of surge, as, as protectors in current. If you have a very expensive piece of electronic equipment, and you plug it in to charge it. A diode can also prevent the current going the wrong way inside in the piece of expensive equipment, protecting it from damage. And diodes are also used in things called logic gates, which are the basis for all computing computer circuits. Very important to memorize one of them, but even more important to know the symbol of a diode and what does forward and reverse bias mean. Forward biased, the diode is connected so it conducts. Reverse bias to that is connected, so it will not conduct. Make sure you learn those things. Now, getting on to the experiment. 
The experiment is about this, the voltage current relationship for a semiconductor diode, also known as the characteristic curve of a diode, but we're always going to the exams call it the voltage current relationship for a diode. And it's going to be very similar to the ones we've looked at already for the metallic conductor and the filament bulb. Here is the circuit. We have a rheostat to vary the voltage, a battery to provide the voltage, but you're saying, where is the semiconductor diode? Well, don't panic, the semiconductor diode is going in here. There is the semiconductor diode. And the first question I'm sure you're asking is, is that diode, is it forward biased or reverse biased? Well, that's the plus of the battery, that's the minus. So up there is plus, down there is minus. This part of the circuit is plus, this part of the circuit is minus. So will that diode conduct, will a current go from plus to minus down there like that? Yes, of course it will because the current will go through the arrow. So this is a diode and more important it is forward biased. And remember what does that mean? That this diode is connected up so it will allow a current to flow through it. Of course, we also want to know the voltage between the ends of the diode. And this is where I've made a little mess of my diagram. But you see diode forward biased. I have to put the voltmeter here. Now you can see it's not a good idea to put voltmeters on top of your labels. But we're okay. You saw that the diode was forward biased. So this guy here, you don't actually have to label this, but I think it's a good idea. Voltmeter. And that will measure the current. Now, because the current going through a diode can be very, very small, we're going to make one adjustment to our ammeter up here. We're going to call it a milliammeter. A milliammeter is still a device that measures current, but it measures very, very small currents. Looking at this diagram for the semiconductor voltage current relationship for a diode, it's exactly the same diagram as we've seen before for the filament bulb and the metallic conductor. Only have a diode in there and it's forward biased. Well, what readings do you take in this experiment? Well, it's very simple again, same as before. Measure the voltage on the voltmeter, the corresponding current on the ammeter. Well, we're calling it a milliammeter. We put that in there. Increase the voltage in equal steps by moving the slider on the rheostat and get six different corresponding, and that's an important word, values of voltage and current. What do you do when you've got all these corresponding values of voltage and current? To see the relationship between voltage and current, you plot a graph. Now, this is where you really tune in. This is a weird graph. The graph starts out okay. Here is voltage. So here must be current. And we always put in the appropriate units. Voltage is measured in volts. And current is measured, well, we said it was milliamps, didn't we? Although if you put down amps, no one's going to argue. And the graph is a bit odd. The graph is very strange. Because as you make the voltage bigger, the current doesn't seem to do anything. And then all of a sudden, the current seems to just shoot up like that. So, voltage gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the current does nothing, and then shoot up like that. Well, the first thing we can say here is, Graph, not a, graph is definitely not a straight line. Well, what does that tell us? Graph is not a straight line. That must tell us something. That tells us that voltage is not directly proportional to current. And if voltage is not directly proportional to current for the semiconductor diode, that tells us something else. It tells us Ohm's law is not obeyed. So, a semiconductor diode does not obey Ohm's law. You could be asked to plot that graph. In fact, in the question you're going to do shortly, you probably will be asked. There's one other thing I want you to note on that. That point there. Now, what actually starts happening at that point? That point, of course, is on the voltage axis. At that point, at that voltage, the current starts shooting up. So that point, which for a lot of diodes is around 0.7 volts, 
That point is known as the That point is known as the junction voltage. And the junction voltage is the point where the current really starts shooting up. In fact, many people say, below this, will the diode conduct a current? Now, nah, very small current. So the diode really is a insulator below 0 0.7 volts. And then what happens above 0.7 volts? The current shoots up. So above 0.7 volts, the diode is a conductor and that really is what the diode does it suddenly at 0.7 volts between its ends turns from an insulator into a conductor some things like that are often called switches and diodes can be used in automatic switches so you have to know the shape of that graph you have to know that where the point where the voltage the, the voltage at which the current starts shooting up is known as the junction voltage you also have to know that the current is usually measured in milliamps. Also, you have to note the graph is clearly not a straight line, therefore voltage is not proportional to current, therefore Ohm's law is not obeyed by a semiconductor diode. That's mainly the experiment. But there is one little twist they often ask, and this is where you really have got to bed in and listen very, very carefully. Okay, I'm trying to go as fast as possible because it kind of bores people if you don't. Okay, remember we said the diode can be forward biased or the diode can be reverse biased. It's forward biased if this is plus and this is minus and the current can flow through it. It's reverse biased if it's turned the other way around, current tries to come that way, it's not going with the arrow, that is reverse biased. When the diode is forward biased, it conducts. When the diode is reverse biased, it no conducts. It does not conduct, it is a, it's an insulator. Bear that in mind. Now, sometimes they ask you in exams, what happens if you do turn the diode around? So let's look at this circuit diagram. It's the exact same circuit diagram as before. There is our battery, there is our variable resistor, our rheostat. There is our ammeter, well, it was a milliammeter last time. There is our voltmeter to measure the voltage, and there is our diode. But you notice this time the diode is switched around. The top is minus, sorry, the top is plus, that is minus. Current can't go through the diode now, so what do we say about the diode? The diode now is The diode is set up so it cannot conduct a current. It is reverse biased. But here's the catch. When a diode is reverse biased, in theory it should now allow no current to flow through it, but in reality it allows a tiny, tiny, tiny current to flow through it. That tiny current is so small, you cannot measure it in a nanometer, you can't measure it in a milliameter, you've got to go down to what's called a microammeter. Now, this is a and a microamp is one millionth of an amp, 10 to the power of minus 6. So it's measuring millionths of an amp, not million amps, millions of an amp. That ammeter now, that microammeter, will measure incredibly small currents. Because it's found, if you reverse bias a diode, it actually does allow a tiny, tiny current to flow through it. So the graph now, or well, it's often asked, if you reverse bias a diode, what changes do you make with the circuit? So very quickly, that's the circuit for the forward biased. This is the circuit for the reverse biased. What changes did we make? Well, the first change we made, we reverse biased the diode. We turned the diode around. And what was the second change we made to the circuit? Well, we took out the milliammeter and we replaced it. Replace milliammeter with a more sensitive instrument, 
a microammeter. Now, when you do this and plot the graph, you find that something really interesting happens. You get a small current going the wrong way. That has uses in a thing called a Zener diode, which thankfully, or maybe fortunately, is not on your course. Okay, so we've made a couple of changes to the circuit. We reverse bias the diode. We put in a microammeter instead of a milliammeter because it reads the smaller um, places of decimal, more places of decimal, it reads smaller currents. Now let's look at our graph. Well, you say, hang on a sec, that's the same graph as before. The voltage measured in volts, the current measured in milliamps, and same graph as before, and I hope we haven't forgotten what that point is there, roughly around 0.7 volts for a lot of diodes. That is known as the the junction voltage, the point where the current starts shooting up. You know, if I was doing it again, I might move it a little bit left, but it gets it gets the point. Now, if you reverse bias the diode down to the negative voltages, you've turned it around, you get a very, very small current flowing the wrong way. A very small current. In fact, it's so small that below the line here, we actually measure in microamps. So that is the full curve of the diode. When the diode is forward biased, the positive voltages, it starts shooting up at 0.7. When it's reverse biased, the negative voltages, below the axis there, negative voltages, you get a very small current, but it can only be measured in microamps. I think you need to learn that graph. You will never have to plot that part of it, but you could be asked, what does it look like? So, to summarize, diode is kind of a weird little device. It is a one-way street for electric current, allows current to flow in one direction only. It can be forward biased or reverse biased. It has certain uses, like rectification, turning AC into DC. The experiment to uh, plot the curve is very, very simple. It needs that circuit there. That circuit is the same as before. The graph is kind of an unusual one. It just shoots up around 0.7 volts. That's known as the junction voltage. Uh, semiconductor diodes do not obey Ohm's law because voltage is not proportional to current because it's not a straight line graph. And if you reverse bias the diode, if you turn it around, it will leave a small current through it, but that current is so small it can only be measured with a microammeter. And you get this part of the graph now because it's, it's going the wrong way. That current is kind of literally going the wrong way. But remember, one unit there and one unit there are not the same. That's milliamps. So this axis, this axis is, um, this axis, the current would be uh, a hundred, thousand times smaller. So that current there would be a thousand times smaller than the current up there because it's in microamps. Microamps are 10 to the minus six of an amp. Milliamps are only 10 to the minus three. This number is a thousand times smaller than that. Okay, I hope that's been some use to you. I ran through that very quickly, but you can go back and stop the video and listen to my annoying voice anytime you want by doing that. I really recommend it. If you're looking at these little videos, look at them on a large screen. A mobile phone, you will see nothing. Next time I give you instructions, it will be a question on the voltage current relationship for a semiconductor diode. I was hoping this would be 10 minutes, it's gone to 20, but that's life. Good night.